Can y'all hear me? Yes. Take my heart, take my mind, take my soul. Uh -huh. Woo! All right. I was just sharing with um, Bettina that I felt like I felt like a kettle. You know when you put a kettle to boil water for tea, and it's just like so. But I'm gonna try to keep it together up here, and I'm counting on you all. I got these heels on, and you're on this, I'm on the stage, so catch. But um, before I share with you all, I just want to give glory and honor to God for this opportunity to share with you today. It is such a blessing to be here. Um, I am very humble every time that I'm asked to speak to anyone, to share with anyone. Um, and so I just thank God for this opportunity and thank you all for those of you have, who have been joining us and sharing with us in Girlfriend Therapy Network since year one, which was 2011. And you have returned over and over again in supporting this ministry and just being a part of it. And we are probably more blessed than you are just to have the chance to to deliver what it is that God has us to deliver to you. I want to thank God for my husband. Amen. This is a woman's forum, so he's one of two men here. But I thank God for him because he is not ashamed. My husband will support me and encourage me in everything that I do. So I thank God for my good man. So, and, um, so. Standing in one place for me, for those of you especially who know me, is a bit of a challenge. Because I get so excited, so I start to move around. But I'll keep it to that. How many of us have seen another sister's life, looked at certain aspects of her life, and then thought to ourselves, she's got it together? Now, how many of us would love to have it together? And some of you may be thinking, well, that's not possible. But it is. And that's exactly what God wants for us, is that we have it all together. And whatever it is, it could be your finances, it could be your health, it could be your marriage, your business, your career, you. A couple of months ago, Kwanzaa and I were on the phone and she shared with me that she felt God led her um, for us to do things a little bit differently this year in growth and therapy, and that she was gonna have a share from the theme one in Christ from a personal perspective. So, I'm going to get personal. Is that all right? Now, when she said one in Christ, my mind immediately shifted to a familiar passage of Scripture that most, if not all of us, uh, are, are familiar with. And that's 1 Corinthians 12, 1, 12, sorry, 12, 12 through 31, which talks about the body as a unit made up of many parts. With each part working together, None being like the other or taking the place of another. Everyone being different, yet equally important. And every single part together and placed as God intended it to be. Now, I've heard and read this scripture many, many times. And I can hear the same scripture 20 times, and you all can probably relate to that. And every single time I read it, I get something different from it. Because the word of God is living and active. It has a spirit of its own. And so it speaks to us from wherever we are at that time and for what we need from God at that time. He speaks to us through his word. And so as I heard, and so as I meditated on this passage, I became intrigued by how it utilizes the human body as a metaphor to describe how we as individual members of the body of Christ are linked together. And each of us supplemented the other having the same value while having different abilities. Still being unique and functionally different, but all connected with there being no division between us. And I was fired up, y'all. I was getting myself ready to share with you all from this and talk about how we're all connected because of our belief that Christ gave his life for us and how we're connected because as Ephesians 4, 4 through 6 describes, we are a spiritual unit through our faith in and relationship with God. And the same, and that same spirit of God that is in me is in you. And that we're not meant to be the same in our individual purposes, but to be the same in spirit. And that is being led by the spirit of God. Going in the same direction. And all of this is absolutely true. Because we are all connected. But in any case, 
God has a sense of humor, and I find that he has some pretty creative ways of letting me know what's really important. And the Bible tells me that he knows the plans he has for me, but it's real easy for us to get caught up and stuck on our plans for ourselves, and we set our complex life plan, and then we expect God to fit his plan into our plan. But throughout the same Bible, I'm repeatedly reminded that his plan's priority is less about my job title, my fitness goals, or my financial portfolio. But it's more about me. And that may sound a bit self-absorbed and conceited for some of us, but God is not distracted by all of this. Not by my attitude, not by my feelings or my problems. He's interested in me. I also like to read scripture from different versions of the Bible because I find that I get something different from it. I especially love, love the Message Bible because it's cutthroat, it's straight, straight to the point. You don't have to interpret anything. You don't have to try to translate anything. It's straightforward. And so when I read Ephesians 4.4 in the Message Bible, it says, that we're all called to travel in the same direction. Yeah. And listen to this. It commands us to stay together both outwardly and inwardly. And I don't know about you, and Eric, I believe, was talking about how God speaks to us. I don't know about you, but God talks to me in my language. And so when I read that, what I heard was, girl, get it together. Yeah. Inside and out. Now, we have a tendency to start on the outside and then kind of work our way in. And then sometimes we even forget to get to the end part at all. Now, realizing that to get, not realizing that to get right on the outside and have that last, for my career to take off, for my money to multiply, for my marriage to flourish, I need to face all the facts that are going on on the inside of me and fix it. God. It seems real simple. When we think we can piecemeal our mess to God one handful at a time and give it to him to fix it for us. And in the meantime, we go out and do whatever our broken selves want to. And then have enough to wonder why he didn't change our situation. <laughs> Ladies, I was an example of exactly what I'm talking about. Kwanzaa mentioned she met, she met me in my early days. Now my character hasn't changed. My attitude has, the spirit behind it has, definitely. When I was in my early 20s, I would call myself a hot mess. Not on the outside, on the outside it appeared that I had it all together. But on the inside, I was broken, I was hurt, I was angry, I was frustrated, I was depressed, I was lonely, you name it, I was mad. But nobody else could tell, because I seemed like, oh, I had it all together. Thursdays, I was in somebody's happy hour. I wasn't a drinker, but I was there for the ambiance. I was in poetry slam for the onions. I was at first Friday, second Friday, third Friday, fourth Friday, fifth Friday, sixth Friday, whatever Friday it was, I was there. Saturday, I was at Dream. Y'all remember Dream? For those of you who are around my age, down in D.C., and every weekend that, that club had a different name, right? And then on Sunday, I was in church. Stop. In church. Because, you know, I was saved. My sanctification hadn't been delivered to me yet, but I was saved. And yes, I knew God is my healer, my deliverer, my provider, my way maker. But what I didn't know at that time was that just as my getting saved required a yes from me, in the same way, my life changed, my getting it together, my faith growth required my participation. And for a while, I was clueless. So I wanted what, what theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer would call cheap grace where I get to do what I want to do while enjoying what I thought was the benefits of being a child of God. And what I didn't understand at that time was that whether I'm born with it or get, it through, it, get, get it through experience or exposure, whatever I identify with shapes what I believe. It shapes what I believe about myself, my life, my future, other people. What I believe directs what I think. What I think drives what I do that ultimately results in an outcome, good or bad, which impacts my life. 
Now let me get a little more specific. I was doing real well on the outside. I was always a good student. I was cute. Wasn't a troublemaker. I had a job. I generally maintained on the crest of the wave of opportunity. And I've always been a go-getter, always been driven in life, always wanted better, always wanted to have better, always wanted to be better. And that's still me, but with a different spirit behind it because I have a different approach now. Back then, the success that came from all the attention and effort that I dedicated to the extended parts of my life were temporary and pointless. And it was like, some of you probably know this, it was like taking a blood pressure pill right before you bite into that first piece of fried chicken, <laughs> and then you do it over and over and over again, and then get angry with God because this healing thing isn't working. That's right. <laughs> so we have a tendency at times to date God like he's a dude. <laughs> you know how we do before we get spiritually serious? When we're going through, you know, we have time, we start praying and fasting, we go in, going to the to the to the throne of grace, to the holy of holies, we laid out flat, prostrate. And we promise to spend time with him, we promise to be consistent, we're reading the word, thinking the grass is greener on the other side. And then we tell God, Lord, if you would just get me through this, God, if you would just deliver me, Lord. You know, if if you just get me this, this new job, this new position, I'll get it together. I'll come to work on time. You know, once I move down south, people down south are real nice. I'll change my attitude. If, I, if you give me a good man, Lord, I'll settle down. Once I lose this weight, God, I'll, I'll dress myself up. I'll get it together. Then he walks us into our next blessing, you know, because he's God, and he wants to bless us so bad. And then that blessing, you know, the one we've been praying for for so long, we find something wrong with it. There are weeds there, too. And we're unhappy again, angry with God again, not interested in him again. And while we're in our funk, we start watching shows like Real Wives, Scandal, The Game, Empire, fertilizing our numbness and attraction to scenarios that don't line up with the Word of God. And we use them as comparisons to justify how our situation isn't just that, isn't that bad. We get on Facebook and we're catching up with everybody else's life and we go through their pictures and we tell ourselves, it was so good to them. And they look so good, because everybody looks so good on Facebook. And we get caught up in their life list that we fail to realize that just like us, they're not posting selfies of when they're going through. That's right. They're not posting pictures of when they're sad and irritated and depressed and frustrated when they're fussing at the kids. That's right. So we tend to tear ourselves down based on our perception of other people's lives without knowing their whole story. And believe me, you will not get someone's journey pressing through the valley of dry bones in 140 years. Right. So, why do we keep doing this? Why do we keep doing this to ourselves? Why do, why do we keep measuring ourselves against someone else's dimensions? Why do we try to act like we got it all together when we're so broken inside? I look at her life and think she's so happy. And then you look at her life, check out her pictures on Instagram, and then you say, she's so beautiful. And then you hear what she says and you say to yourself, she's so intelligent and confident. Then we go home and we look ourselves in the mirror, only to self-destruct in five, four, three, five, two many different pieces of it. And we can't track it all because we keep comparing ourselves to images that someone or something other than God liked and convinced us this time. But I digress. <laughs> For me, until I realized that I had to reprioritize my life and do something about getting connected to Christ for real. I'm talking about intentionally merging my heart and my mind with his spirit. Until I did that, I was robbing myself of living in the freedom that was given to me 2,000 plus years ago because I didn't know how to receive it. And ladies, if we don't address the root that's causing the problem, not only do we keep from enjoying life, but we remain stuck dealing with the same issues 
over and over and over, and they don't just go away. We put lipstick on it. We dress it up. We celebrate it. We ignore it, hide it, try to hide from it, even laugh about it, dismiss it, and rush it, rush it off at times. We have a tendency to live life from the outside in, thinking everything will come together eventually, if only. But, what if we did it the other way around? Living life from the inside out. Now, I choose a different standard. Who's with me? God the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit are three in one, together. They created each of us in their image. When we were created, we were given the mind of Christ. That's already happened. He is the vine, we are the branches. Together with him, we can do all things, but apart from him, we can do nothing. The Bible says that it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So we're in this thing together. <laughs> in order for me to become one in Christ, I have to become one with Christ. No more teetering between the world and the world. I can't be all mixed up in things that this world labels as acceptable and expect to believe that what God says about me. But when I become intertwined with the things of the word, my belief system shifts. And my thinking conforms. And my actions change. Not because I'm that good but because he's that good to me. Yeah. Yeah. I am made righteous, so I do right. Because I've wrapped myself around the understanding that my father loves me unconditionally. Yeah. My bloodline says that I'm at risk to have high blood pressure and that I'm cancer prone. But I choose to believe what the Bible says, and that's that I'm healed. Yes. And while blood is thicker than water, the blood took care of that already, so God already did as well. Now, I participate because I choose to eat healthy, I choose to exercise, and I choose to manage my stress. And no, I can't change my past experiences, but I look ahead towards the mark to where God is taking me because I choose to believe that I am a new creature. All things have I don't have to accept or expose myself to everything the world throws in my direction. I refuse to conform and focus myself on being transformed instead. When I would do good, evil is always present. But I choose to believe that he who is in me is good. And Christ in me gives me the boldness and the confidence to command evil to back up. That's right. I have an anonymous quote attached to my signature block in my email at work, and it says, it's not who you think you are that's holding you back, it's who you think you are not. Yes. Now, I am not common. So I will do common things. I am loyalty. I belong to God. I am fearless, fruitful, and free. And being one in Christ does not tell me that I can't do the things I used to do. It empowers me to not want to do the things that I used to do. So there's no confusion about what I will accept in my life. And there's no division between what I believe and what I do. I am the head and not the tail. So my tail has no business being in some places, no peace being around some people, and no place for the devil's distraction. The power I have comes from who's inside of me. Yeah. It's not of me. Yes. And the standard I live by, the media can't fake it. Right. Google can't track it. Yes. And the world can't match it. And its attempts to aren't good enough for me. Right. Amen. So ladies, we can work out. And we can try to change our outer appearance. But the lasting transformation starts from the inside out with the renewing of our mind, by getting connected to Christ through his work. That is accepting 
receiving and believing that his, what his word says about us. That we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And I know you are familiar with all of these, but we have to be reminded because the word is living. And so I know that what I'm saying is speaking to someone's situation. Do so let's not take it for granted because you've heard all this before. But right now, what you need to get right now, whether it's for you or for someone else, you won't get it. And it's not because of me. I take no credit. That we are above and not beneath. That when we are weak, his power is perfect. I'm pro-life. Anybody else pro-life? Yes. I choose the abundant life. Here, before I leave this earth, which is what God intended for us, I'm setting my mind on living according to the spirit of God that is in me, that is in Christ. As I'm connected to Christ, I am one with him. And I, I believe what he believes about me. Thinking those things that are not as though they are and trusting him because we're doing this thing. So in Christ, I am whole and complete, having one mind, one heart, one spirit, no division between them. I am one in him, with him. I can do all things through him, for him. And when each of us get on that same page, connected to Christ, we are one with each other in him, together, not being the same but going in the same direction and fulfilling what 1 Thessalonians 1 declares. Your lives are echoing the master's word. The news of your faith in God is out. We don't even have to say anything anymore. You are the message. Who's with me? 